Kyoto year 11, 12 and 13. This is probably the last video that I'm going to do um, definitely tonight and maybe before Friday. And it's a really, really hard question. So the reason I'm doing it is because it kind of sums up what scholarship calculus is all about. It's not about getting the answer. It's about finding a way to start a problem. And this is one of the hardest questions that I've seen. Um, and I had to cheat and look at the schedule because I got stuck. But I did manage to break the problem down into about six separate steps and I'm going to go through about the first half of them in this video but I'm going to talk a lot about why I chose to do what I do so some of you are not going to want to watch this one um, just to note the question is part C of a four-part question and even the top scholar in 2016 didn't solve the general case here so it is a really tough question but it's got some great coordinate geometry and conics in it and just some clues about how we can make progress on really bad questions so this is how it goes and one of the hardest things I think in this question is to see what we don't need for each part so the first thing that we've got is we've got a hyperbola and P is a point on the right hand branch of this hyperbola and then we're given um, in part A an angle that is angle theta in here and we have to do some stuff to show that sine of theta is 0.6. Now that's not too bad at all. Right? I might video that tomorrow, but I probably don't need to. Then the next part of the question gets a little bit harder, and quite a bit harder. And we're told that we've got some lines that are perpendicular to the asymptotes. Right? So the asymptotes of a hyperbola are these lines here. Right? And if you've done your conics revision, you'll know that they're going to come from the equation of the hyperbola and they're going to be crucial for this question. Now the good news if you've forgotten everything you did about conics is that on the formula sheet you get given the formula for the asymptotes. So in our case, we'll do this bit straight away now because we're going to need these. We've got x squared over 4 minus y squared over 36 equals 1. So a is 2 and b is Six, and that means that my asymptotes fall out straight away as y is equal to 3x and y is equal to negative 3x and just doing that means that you can start to make some progress with this question but let's go back to the problem first okay so in part b we've got um, this point here p and then we're looking at this line here and this line here and they're perpendiculars and they meet the asymptotes, right? But we actually don't need to do that problem to start doing part C. Okay, so in part C, we're told that P is in the first quadrant. And so we've got any point here, P, and we're going to draw a line through that. And that line is going to meet both of the asymptotes, right? P is somewhere on that line. And we've got this horrible looking ratio thing, CP to PD is 1 to lambda. So you can think of that as it's drawn as meaning that this distance here is 1 and this distance down here is lambda. Now we have to find the value of lambda, this question just gets worse and worse, which will minimize the area of the triangle COD. So let's draw COD now. Now I've geogebra this in a minute to show you nicely what we're trying to do. But we've got a triangle going through here, and we're going to try and minimize its area. So after I looked at this and just kind of gulped, after I got a comment from Lofty Dolphin in Hamilton saying, could I have a look at this question? I looked at this question for a long time. And then I realized after I'd done all this work that actually Lofty Dolphin, you wanted 4B, but I haven't done that, sorry. So let's see... Um, how we can break this problem down. Well, we need to find points C and D. Okay, so we've got some point P. So we can just call that point P um, X naught, Y naught. Right, so let's just start off by doing that. So P has got some values, X naught and Y naught. We also know that P is on the hyperbola, but we don't need to use that till quite late in the question. Right, so P is some point. And we want to figure out how can we write the coordinates of C and the coordinates of D if all we've got is that C is on one asymptote and D is on the other asymptote. And we know that these two things are on the same straight line. 
and they go through this point P. Okay, so we've got to get coordinates of C and D. And then once we've done that, we can find the distance from O to C, and then we can find the distance from O to D. And we know from um, level two how to find the area of a triangle. So maybe we can get some part marks by just doing that. And it seems like we might not need to use all the lambda stuff or differentiate anything until late in the question. So you can see that I've already talked for five minutes about this question. I haven't even started doing it. So what I'm going to do now is show you um, how did I break it down. So these were the kind of six things that I tried to do. And I think under exam pressure, what would I have been able to do if I were doing the exam myself? Right, well, I, I probably would have made some progress towards these three here. And then I think this is where I would have got stuck, and this is getting pretty awful. Um, but I'm going to show you now in GeoGebra how it looks. Where's it gone? Oh, disappeared. Okay, so happily I found the GeoGebra thing, and now I, I can't write on this, but I can show you what's going on. So you can see that the red curve is the hyperbola, and I've marked on points O, C, and D. So we've got to find the area of that triangle. Now let's look at what happens when I start to move point, what I'm going to move is actually point C. You can see that that triangle is changing. Now the unfortunate thing that you can't see is the area of that triangle is what we're trying to get as small as we can. So you can see by looking that that's making the area bigger. Here it's getting smaller, but there it looks like it might be going to go out again. Now it turns out that there's a really nice exact answer to what's the smallest area, and it's 12. And off the side in the GeoGebra window, you can see the area hitting 12, and it turns out to do that when we've got a tangent to the curve. Now I didn't use that in my answer at all, because I, I just didn't really see that happening. Um, but that's what we're trying to go with. So if you go back, let's go back now into solving the problem. And first of all, let's see what the examiner said. Well, basically they said that um, this was from the Outstanding Scholarship Exemplar that this student had made no progress on question 4C. Um, and uh, this student still got 8 out of 8, right? And so it's a pretty bad problem. So let's go back into how we break it down. Well, here's my diagram. And the first thing that we're going to do is to find points C and D. So I drew a picture like this. Here's my asymptote, y equals 3x, and here's my curve. And this is point P here, which is x0, y0. This is my line here, point C, and down here is point D. Okay, so D's on the bottom asymptote. Right, so I want you to pause the video and try to write down an expression for point C. Think about it, you're finding the intersection of two points. And the only thing we know is that the line CD is a straight line. So the slope of CD, we could just call M. But I'm going to find it easier if I don't call it M and I call it K instead. Okay, so we've got point P, which is X0, Y0, and we've got point C, which is the intersection of two lines. One of those lines is easy. It's the asymptote, which is Y equals 3X. Now, how can I find the equation of line CD? Well, we're going to use the point gradient form, which is Y minus Y1 is equal to M times X minus X1. But we're going to use that with P instead. So Y minus Y0 is equal to K. I'm using K on purpose. It just means whatever value we've got for my straight line slope. So we've got this. So if we want to find the intersection of those two things, I need to rewrite my second equation like this. So Y equals Y0 plus K times X minus X0. Next, we're going to set these two things equal. So set the two y values equal. And that's going to give me a value for x. We get x is equal to k minus 3 
just moving things to the other side gives me this x coordinate. Now we can do the same thing. Well, we know the y value. The y value is pretty easy, right? Because it's on the asymptote. So y will just be equal to 3 times all of that. So that actually wasn't so bad as long as we got the idea that we can just think of the slope as being a constant. It's k. Right? So point c is equal to this. Now we're going to do the same thing for D. Um, in the interests of time, I'm figuring if you've watched this far, you're probably going pretty well. So point D, we're going to equate um, the other asymptote, y equals negative 3x, with the same point gradient equation. Right? So we get same, exactly the same thing here. So y naught plus kx minus x naught. And if you work through the algebra for that, which actually isn't, isn't long at all, um, you get these coordinates for point D. Now my y coordinate will be negative 3 times the x coordinate because it's on the other asymptote. So I reckon if you got that far, you, it says in the mark schedule that the first mark isn't awarded yet, but I can't believe that they didn't give any marks if you got that far, because that's already quite a bit of hard thinking. So let's go back to the breakdown that I did. We found C and D. Now the next thing we've got to do is actually easy. We just have to use Pythagoras to find the lengths OC and OD. Where's it gone? Okay, let's just go to a new page. So OC, the length OC, is going to come from this. So it's going to be our coordinate, our x coordinate minus 0 squared plus our y coordinate minus 0 squared. Substituting those values in gives me this. Kx0 minus y0 over k minus 3 squared plus 3 times kx0 minus y0 over k minus 3 squared. So you can see that this is going to start to simplify down, and that gives me 10 times this So we've got a perfect square in there, so that's good. So length OC is equal to root 10 times kx0 minus y0 over k minus 3. And you can do the same thing for OD. You end up getting this, root 10 times kx0 minus y0 over k plus 3. So we're not there yet, but here's the breakdown. We've found those lengths. Now we're going to find the area of the triangle OCD. So just going back to GeoGebra, the triangle that we're looking for is that shaded blue area. Um, one thing I can't draw on this, this is kind of annoying. Um, we're told something useful in part A of this question about the angle. So going back to here, we know that this angle here, theta, gives me sine theta is equal to 0 0.6. And so when we're working with our triangle, this is theta here, we want pi minus theta. All right, so think about what the area of a triangle is. The area of a triangle is half AB sine C. And see, we want a half times OC times OD times sine of pi minus theta. If you've watched this far, you almost certainly know that sine of pi minus theta is the same as sine of theta, right? Just by the symmetry of the graph. We've got this point and this point, and we know that that's 0 0.6. So here we've got 0 0.3 times OC times OD. 